Thank you. Hello, everyone. So I'm actually going to speak about one revolution, not Arab revolutions. Um, and it's really in commemoration of the great Arab revolution, the great Arab revolt. They call it the Thawr al Arabiya or Thawr al Arabiya al Kubra, which took place in uh, June 10 of 1916. I, th I feel it's very important. I'm going to explain why. But before that, just a little introduction is that, uh, so the mission of the Dearborn Open Mic is to create a space for f expression, artistic, intellectual expression of the city of Dearborn and its diversity. Um, and one of the, uh, you know, uh, themes that is presented through, uh, uh, through this mic is the uh, identity. So as uh, an, an ethnic city, as a diverse city, uh, the topic of identity as an Arab American identity or any other identity, how do we uh, express our identity, how do we recognize and uh, perceive our identity. So this talk has to do with, uh, with that. Uh, and, from the, and something else is the talks are not really, you know, we are in an age that there is no more need for anyone to give us any kind of information. You know, the information, there is a, a flow of information that is tremendous out there. Um, the issue is there is an overflow of information and deciphering what is authentic from what's not authentic is, is probably the only struggle. But as far as information, if someone has a question, it is really a self-effort to answer that question. So the mic is not really um, a place where I'm going to read for you information that you can easily find by yourself. But it's really about perspective. How do we put this information into a perspective that actually affects our life or it has to do with our life? Uh, or sometimes reflection, personal reflections or academic reflections. If we have more professional people, they can have their um, academic prof you know, or professional reflection on certain type of information. So I'm gonna uh, basically bring the Arab revolt. Of course, there's no time. This is 10 to 15 minutes talk. So there is no time to go over uh, that very, very um, extensive um, uh, history that happened, uh, out of which all the Arab words and the Arab people are influenced till today. I mean, that's it's just, just the overflow of that incident, of that revolt. So I'm not going to uh, explain the incident or go over it, the event, but I'm going to reflect on it um, how does it relate to us uh, today? So just in summary, so, so if, if you're not aware, to, to be aware of what we're talking about, is that in 1916, so, so Arab identity, so basically it's interesting, um, an, an Arabic identity is not an ethnic identity. Uh, it is not a race, it's not a racial identity. It's more of a self identity. So if someone perceives or identifies himself or herself as an Arab, then they are an Arab. There is nothing to negate that. The history of Arabs goes back to 900 uh, BC. Uh, some claim even further than that. Uh, there is writings, Arabic um, calligraphy, a very primitive one that was in the first uh, century BC uh, found. And uh, Arabs basically, they, um, they were mostly Bedouin nomads that have um, concentrated in, uh, or lived in areas roamed in the areas between what's today Saudi Arabia all the way to Mauritania in, in Africa, North Africa. These are the areas where historically the Arab nomads were mostly concentrated in the Arabian Peninsula, which is today Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, UAE, Qatar, Bahrain, Kuwait and the Levant area, which is today Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, uh, Jordan, Palestine. So the, uh, these two areas are where most Arabs they, uh, they, they, they lived in. And uh, the Arabic history has exploded after uh, the birth of Islam, because Islam uh, was the first force that have united Arabs together. And it had 
a philosophy. It had a, a, a curriculum that wanted it wanted to spread. It has an expansive ideology and it organized armies and there were Islamic conquests and Islam within 100 years, that's in the seventh century, within 100 years, it actually expanded all the way to uh, North Africa uh, going west and to uh, China going east and, and India, the South Indies. Um, Arabs as people who have been the first Muslims, Arabs have ruled. Now, I'm not commenting on the positives and negatives of that era and the, the positives and negatives of Islamic conquest, etc. That's a whole different topic. But uh, Arabs had, had ruled at that time in the name of Islam during three dynasties, the Rashidis dynasty, the Umayyads dynasty, and the Abbasids dynasty. Uh, when the uh, Mughals occupied Baghdad in, in 1258, that was the fall of the Abbasid uh, Empire. So since 1258, Arabs have not ruled until the modern time. So, and the, the consequences of the 1258 conquest of Baghdad, so you know that that is the golden era of Islam and the golden era of, of Arabs. That's where 90% uh, of the basis of sciences were established during that era, during, it's called the golden age, the, the late Abbasids uh, 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 stage in history, where Baghdad was the center of the, of the world, and um, while Europe was living in the, in the, in the darkness of the, of the dark ages. And um, there was also, the Arabs also ruled during, so after the, the fall of uh, Baghdad with the, with the uh, attack and the conquest of the Mughals, uh, there were small uh, countries popping up and disappearing. Uh, one of which is the Fatimid, the Fatimid uh, um, um, dynasty, which uh, was basically uh, folk, uh, centered in Egypt from 909 to 1171. Just to give you an example how that affects us, the Fatimid, the, the Abbasid, uh, the Rashid, the Rashidi uh, Khalifa, and the Umayyads. These four have had flags. The Umayyads had a white flag, the Rashidi had a green flag, the Fatimid had a green flag, the Abbasid had a black flag, uh, and the Arabic flags today are made out of these colors because of that. This is how history kind of continues uh, itself. So once the, so these, after the Mughals uh, destroyed the, 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 the Islamic civilization and stopped it in 1258, uh, there were smaller countries, there were continuous war, and it took a while before one of these uh, smaller countries, smaller dynasties, Every dynasty that would pop up with different ethnicities, they would try to take over the Islamic world again, establish Khilafah, they would fail. And, you know, it continues to pop up, expand, shrink, until one of them actually succeeded in taking over the Islamic world again and creating one unified empire, which is the Ottoman Empire. So the Ottoman Empire started in 1299 and continued till 1922. So during the Ottoman time, the Arabic identity was suppressed. The style of the Ottomans is that they would, uh, you know, they would draft all the young men to the army, they would send them to different parts of the world, so they would take Albanians, let them fight in the, the east, and take Arabs, let them fight in the west, and they kept moving people around to quell any revolution, to to have uh, uh, no uh, possibility of creating any resistance to them. They also suppressed language. So the Turkish language was the official language and they suppressed all other languages. When a scholar or a star shines in any place of the Islamic world at that time, they would move them to Istanbul, to the Constantinia at that time, so the, the, the capital of the Islamic world, and they would be kept there where they can, you know, the knowledge basically was centralized. There was a, the most uh, extreme example of centralization in history, where nothing is allowed to take place except in the capital of the, of the Ottoman Empire. So there's a lot of details, but I'm just 
giving an outline here to, to come. So for 400 years, during the Ottoman time, the Arabic identity was completely suppressed. We had actually a death of, of Arabic writing and, and uh, expression in all kinds of forms. Um, up until the weakness of the Ottoman Empire, which uh, started to um, grow the sentiments of uh, the Arab, uh, uh, basically, independence from the Ottoman rule. So how I'm going to relate this to us here. So these sentiments, the, the one event in history that has trickled down and influenced all other events in seeking independence is the American Revolution. The American Revolution was one of the most inspirational incidences in history. Uh, basically uh, taking away a king and giving the rule to the people. That was one of the earliest successful examples of that. It was very inspirational. It inspired one of the most important revolutions in history in the modern time, which is the French Revolution. Uh, colonialism started. That was a nightmare for the Arabic world, but at the same time, it freed them from the Ottomans. So when the British, the French, and then the British took over Egypt, that was the first time where a print press in Arabic came to Egypt. And the Egyptians were allowed to travel and get educated, so they started going to, the, to Paris, to the Sorbonne, to, uh, to get educated. Actually, the start of what's called the Arabic Nahda, the Arabic Renaissance, started with Mustafa Tahtawi, who went to Sorbonne and came back. All this intellectuality taking place in Paris people who had multiple revolutions and rewrote constitutions three times and they're creating all this uh, new, the, the design of the new world. So it was very inspirational. He came back and started the, the intellectual Arabic Renaissance, uh, Mustafa Tatawi in Egypt. The first Arabic press in the, in, the Eastern, in the Asian Arabic world was brought by an American missionary to Beirut. So with these two print presses in Beirut, 